Deion Sanders has always been adamant that Colorado has a place in college football with the big dogs, and he may have just helped them get a seat at that table. You are Locked On Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Bus. I am your host, Kevin Borbin. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. We are also brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. Colorado football, Deion Sanders. There's big moves being made. They've always been in the headlines for things that Coach Prime says, for things that Shador and Travis Hunter do. But one thing that we've known about Colorado is that compared to other programs around the country, they have not been able to stack up in the NIL ranks. Realistically, their biggest NIL earners are Shador, Travis, and Shiloh. Two of them happen to be his sons, and the other one happens to be a two-way star. The rest of the team outside of Cormani McLean, who has a pretty high on three NIL value valuation, haven't really had like the NIL um, surgence that you would have expected from a program like Colorado. And a lot of that was because Colorado hasn't been able to play the NIL game. Uh, Coach Prime has made it clear that he's not going to buy players and he's not going to be paying for players to come. But he says, if you come to Colorado, you will get paid. And I think that's an interesting kind of mindset. But recently, as of Tuesday morning, Colorado has made a move in the NIL realm that will help out this program tremendously in both recruiting and the transfer portal. So Colorado has consolidated its NIL market with the launch of the 5430 Alliance, according to On3's Pete Nakos. Um, the collective believes it is it needs a budget of over $8 million to put Colorado on the path to compete with the big boys around the country. Um, realistically, that's a big deal. And then Coach Prime said, we're here. And we're not selling for nothing. We have a commitment to dominate on and off the field. And in order to do that, we need to dominate in our NIL, pro in our NIL program as well. 5430 Alliance gives, gives every darn Colorado fan the opportunity to be a part of history. And it don't stop, baby. So it basically allows for fans to donate, which some of us can be tax refundable. Um, donate money to help contribute to their program success. And I think there's a major deal for Colorado because obviously right now, there is some NIL opportunities, but I would say for the most part, Colorado is succeeding based off of Coach Prime's image and based off of the attention that they bring and not more, not really the NIL opportunities that they could bring as well. Now, we've seen people like Shador and Travis and Shiloh get those NIL opportunities, whether it be with Bleacher Report for Travis or the fashion show with the brothers, uh, the Sanders brothers. But everyone else, it's like, okay, what about me? You know, what about me over here, Jimmy Horn Jr.? I, I'm sure he has some NIL stuff. But th for just for instance, these guys are at Colorado now are trying to take it to another level. I think eight million is a good starting point. I think realistically, you probably need sixteen to twenty million to compete with all the big dogs. But the fact that Colorado is showing this buy into the program is showing that there's a buy into and a buy into the future is everything that this program needs from Coach Prime, obviously, because there's a lot of noise of like, will he leave? Will he stay? Will he go? But NIL help is kind of getting them to the next level. I think realistically, like when Matt Rule um, talked about how much a quarterback costs in the portal, um, it's just one of those things where like Cam Ward, for instance, he was commanding enough money that left let him stay from the NFL draft. Like he was draft bound, but then NIL money was put together and obviously brought him back to college. Matt rule himself. Obviously I know Colorado fans are like, ew, that was me hissing. If you can't see uh, <laughs> that he said it costs $2 million to get a good quarterback in the portal for Colorado. When you think of how not there, their NIL stuff was yet. They were basically landing people off of vibes, coach primes clout. And, the promise or the thought of taking it to the next level once you get there having this money to kind of back their back their chatter will help the program tremendously this helps the team take it to the next level the big 12 right now obviously that's where colorado is for the foreseeable future at least until the next wave of conference realignment 
The Big 12 is up for grabs. Colorado realistically can assert themselves as a power if they're able to outspend everyone. And now you don't want college football to be who could bid the most and who could pay the most for talent. But that's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it always has been. And that's exactly what it always will be until there's some sort of guidelines on how much players can get paid. And I don't foresee that happening anytime soon. So if you're Colorado, what moves do you have to make to set yourself apart from the rest of the Big 12? Well, one, you need to be big spenders. You need to be able to attract this top talent. Two, you need to show that you can win on the field. And so I think Coach Prime plans to handle the on-field stuff this season. So the off-field stuff needs to kind of coincide with it. If they're building on the field, they need to build off the field. And I think that was kind of what his statement was saying. And realistically, the more success you have in the in the NIL ranks, the easier it is to recruit. Recruiting is all about, and the portal really, is all about how much can you give me. And that's the sad part of college football. I'm not going to, I think it's great that these kids can all make money off their name, image, and likeness, but I don't think the intention was for uh, guys who have never played college snaps to be getting millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars just to go to a program. But hey, that's the state of college football we're in. So more power to these young guys. Get your money while you can. But Colorado hasn't been dabbling in recruiting as much as they should. And I think this is, is a sign that they are going to start dabbling in recruiting. So if you're a Colorado fan, make sure to check it out. Obviously, it all hinges on how much money is donated. You'd like to see some uh, bigger names donate some bigger money. So that way it doesn't always fall on the average fan. But Colorado is making steps towards advancing in college football and that's exactly what you expect under someone like coach prime who is realistically always ready to take that next step of advancing whatever it may be so colorado football in the nil scene and they are looking to make some noise when we come back i'm going to talk about someone who i think could some make, could make some noise excuse me and that's shador sanders i think he's poised for a breakout year and i have two major reasons why and you're probably going to be shocked But first, a word from our sponsors over at FanDuel. This episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on a num- on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on, sp- on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. If I had to pick who's going to win it all, I'd look at UConn. They are the most dominant team in the country. They have size. They have shooting. They have everything you need to kind of make a tournament run. Now, obviously, they won last year, and it's very rare for a team to go back-to-back, but they're motivated. They got some hate in their hearts because they think everyone's against them. It's UConn versus the world. So go check out the Huskies over there in UConn. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines, and you can even pick who's going to win it all. Like I said, just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. This episode of Locked on Bus is also brought to you by our sponsors over at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. We are also brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in. We're on the topic of Shador Sanders. Sorry if there was a little pause there. I've got the ugliest sneezes, and I don't want you guys to see them and or hear them. (laughs) We're talking about Shador Sanders, Colorado's quarterback. He's their star. He's their heart. He's their everything. But last year, I don't think we saw his full potential. And you're probably like (gasps) clutching pearls, maybe fainting. Um, I'll give you a couple seconds to to kind of come back if you fainted. One, two, here we are. Okay, we're back. I don't think we saw Shador Sanders at full strength last season because obviously the team built around him wasn't built for him to succeed at the highest level. And you're probably like, what? There's three reasons. I think I said two. I have three. Shador Sanders due for a breakout year is what I'm going to get to. 
for starters, we all know the obvious one. The offense line was horrendous. Um, last season, he was sacked a total of, drum roll please, 52 times, which is the, he in his two years at Jackson State, he was sacked a total of 58 times combined, which obviously I think, I think Shador Sanders may have a taking a sack problem, which I think we'll kind of find out this season because the offense line is supposed to be a lot better. Maybe he does hold the ball a little long, but last season, the offense line was terrible. They gave up. 56 sacks in total, I think. Obviously, uh, Shador didn't play the last game or the last game and a half. And they could not block for anything. They really eliminated half of the playbook because they couldn't do play action things. They couldn't do any RPO looks. They couldn't really run a a play that wasn't out of shotgun, which is a bold strategy. Kind of makes you one-dimensional because you know you're going to pass. And then when teams started to have success against Colorado, they were basically just taking away all the big shots and making Shador take the throws in front of him. And they were kind of getting pressure on him to the point where he wasn't even able to take those throws in front of him. So the offensive line is going to be better. I think that's a huge step in him having a breakout year. I think with more time gives him more time to process, which gives him more time to make big and clutch throws, which we saw him do a lot last year. Reminder, he threw for 3,230 yards, 27 touchdowns and three picks. Um, he also completed 69% of his passes. So you're, it's pretty crazy to think that there's another level, but I do think there's another level to this. Secondly, there was no run game. I think a lot of what Shador did was impressive because everyone knew he was going to throw the ball. There was no like, okay, we got to look out for the run here. Like there was no, oh, look out for the play action. They might fake a handoff to Hankerson and have someone going deep. No, they may have tried that, but every defense and their moms – and their dads, and their dogs, and their cats, and their fishes too, maybe their turtles as well, they knew that Colorado was going to be throwing the ball. Colorado was hucking that thing around the yard. I still imagine they'll be hucking that thing around the yard in 2024, but they're going to have a better offense line, they're going to have a better rushing attack, and they're going to have a mixture of those two, which combines which when you have a better offense line, a better rushing attack, it, it opens things up for the passing game. And Shador was doing... I, I, it's hard to contextualize or put this into words as to how magical of a season he had, because I think everyone's going to be like, he was four and eight. How is it magical? You look at what he was dealing with in front of him, the situation around him with the running backs, not being able to get much going. He was breaking records when realistically most quarterbacks probably would have had more interceptions than touchdowns. Like he was, he sets himself apart by being so good that I think we kind of, don't appreciate enough how good he was this past season. So with the run game, it opens up the play action, which opens up more looks for Shador. It opens up more opportunities for Travis to get open, for LeJounte Wester to get open. It opens up everything else. And then I was making an appearance on Locked On College Football with Spencer McLaughlin, uh, the former host of Locked Locked On Pac-12. And he was talking about what to expect from Shador. And I was like, honestly, I think the biggest thing is last season, he had a bad offensive line. And he has an offense that he didn't really like. And you're probably like, what? He Shador said that he should, he said himself, this isn't me putting words into his mouth. It kind of happened a couple weeks ago, but it just like clicked for some reason a couple days ago for me. He was saying that he didn't really prefer the offense that Sean Lewis was running because there was a lot of choice routes, which if you're not familiar, it's basically the wide receivers are running either a post, a slant, or an out route, whatever it may be, depending on what play they call. So whatever the receiver sees the defender doing whatever coverage that or whatever look the defender is giving them, he's going to run his route accordingly. And for him, or for Shador, excuse me, he kind of felt like that took the ball out of his hands, that took the choices out of his hands, because he's relying on someone else to make the decision. And so oftentimes, maybe he didn't agree with the routes that were being selected by receivers. So this offense, this season... Shador kind of hinted that it's going to be more predicated on him making the checks, him choosing what routes people run. And so you combine that with the fact that he's going to have more time to throw. He's going to be able to kind of dictate the offense, be the point guard, facilitate the ball. I think this sets up, assuming he makes the right decisions, which I do think he's underratedly one of the smarter quarterbacks in college football. I think we're going to be po- Shador Sanders is going to be poised for a big year. And Colorado needs that because they are writing some checks that they need to cash or at least come close to cashing. They're talking college football playoff. They're talking Big 12 title. And I think those are lofty goals. I don't think anyone goes into the season going, you know what? We won four games last year, so I think six would be cool. Like, I don't think Coach Prime is going to be like, I think six games would be fun. 
I think a bowl game would be exciting for us and would be a good step for the program. No, he's obviously going to declare a playoff run. But obviously, when you are one Mr. Deion Sanders or one Mr. Shador Sanders, when you say things, people hold on to them. So that way, when it doesn't happen or if it doesn't happen, people could throw it right in your face. And so I think Shador having more control of the offense could help this team out tremendously being of how smart of a quarterback he is. He works with Tom Brady. Um, he has a great quarterback coach down there and or great. He had a great quarterback coach down there in Miami. He is doing all the right things. And I think this next season with a better run game, a better offense line and an offense that he feels he's more comfortable in. I think those are all building to him having a better, better season, which is pretty crazy to think about considering how good he was in his first year at Colorado. So that's something to look out for this next season. If Shador is making huge plays, just know that he could be calling the checks. And if he's making mistakes, just know that um, maybe his, he wasn't thinking uh, about the right thing or the right look on that certain play. But I do think Shador is ready for a big year. You guys comment below how many touchdowns and interceptions you think Shador will throw this next season. We'll kind of compare and contrast in the comment section. When we come back, we are going to be talking about all things spring ball. I think I'm going to talk about three or four guys that I think could be breaking out this spring, could be making a name for themselves this spring, and something to look out for as well. Um, but that's, of course, when we come back. This episode of Locked on Bus is brought to you by our sponsors over at Nissan. Nissan Motors. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys are able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. Make sure to check them out. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Welcome back to Locked on Bus. I appreciate you guys for tuning in and making me your first listen of the day, making me a part of your week or your daily routine, whatever it may be. I want to thank you guys for making Locked on Bus everything it has been so far. We hit 5,000 subs. Let's dive right into spring ball because Colorado has a big spring ball ahead of them, and I don't think a lot of people are putting enough emphasis on it, and I'm going to put all of the emphasis on Colorado. We're talking spring ball chatter. I have been asked thousands, probably not thousands, hundreds of times at least over the past few weeks, who is going to be the spring ball name to know for Colorado? Obviously, they brought in a ton of players, and there's a lot of guys that I think will have huge impacts this season. There's a lot of guys um, like Will Shepard, who's not even there yet, that I think could have a big impact uh, for the buffs. And there's just a few names that I keep going back to where it's like, I think this guy could be a bona fide star for Colorado. And obviously, the offensive line, it's weird to me because I expect them to all, like all the offensive line transfers, just uh, Justin Mayers, um, Tyler Johnson, whoever else it may be, like you, Philip Houston, Yakiri Walker, all these guys. I expect them to have impacts. I do. Khalil Benson, I do. But it's like the offensive line was so bad last year. They lost a majority of their guys. Those aren't the guys that I'm like, you need to look out for them because you know they're going to be starting or you know they're going to be in prominent roles. The guys that I'm pinpointing right now from the portal or from whoever are the guys that I think could be kind of poised for a breakout kind of season, if you will. Um, and up first, I'm going on the defensive side of the ball. and I'm going with DJ McKinney, the Oklahoma State defensive back transfer. I think a lot of people on Twitter, or and especially Twitter, we often get caught up in stats. And so when you look at his stats and Omarion Cooper's stats, it's like they're not that different. And it's like, okay, well, why is if he's so good, why doesn't he have better stats? Well, when you're a defensive back, it always doesn't work out like that. Um, it just doesn't. Sometimes you don't get targeted as much, or sometimes like you just don't get as many opportunities to make a tackle uh, because they don't run your way or whatever. But DJ McKinney is someone that Coach Prime told to his face, you have first-round talent, and I need you to see that because I see that. And so that's high praise for someone who played the position at literally the highest level possible. He may coach prime, I think is the best corner in NFL history and football history. So you have 
the best player of all time at your position telling you that you could play at a level that's a, that's around that stratosphere. I think we have to look out for DJ McKinney. Uh, obviously, having him and Travis Hunter, Cormani McLean, or Mario Cooper, they are set at corner. They just need someone to emerge opposite of Travis Hunter, and I think that person could be DJ McKinney. Now, to the offensive side of the ball, this one probably won't shock you, but the more I hear about him, the more I see of him, I just love it. I think this guy is going to have a huge year. I think he may kind of slide into that that role of of like, oh shoot, we have a game changer that is probably just a little bit faster and maybe better than the other game changer we had, and that's Lejante Wester. I think he is going to really turn some heads. He's already said that he's going to get some touches on special teams. And realistically, I think the more we hear about him from practices and all the things of him standing out, I think he's probably going to be one of Shador's favorite targets. I think it's going to be really hard for teams to cover him. It's going to really, you have to pick your poison. Are you going to cover Travis Hunter, who is going to come down with everything? Are you going to cover Will Shepard, who's ginormous? Or are you going to try to keep up with Lejante Wester? And I think having a wide receiver who is probably so fast, so always be open, big, big news for Shador. Then, we go to the defensive front, and I'm looking at a few guys here, but I'm going to single out one guy in particular, Samuel O. Samuel Okunalola. Lola. I always butcher that. I know I do. I try my best. But Samuel O. As a Colorado's defensive line was what some people call a disaster. And Samuel O., specifically their pass rush, they generated minimal to no pressure, timely pressure. I think they would get pressure at times, but a lot of the times it was too late. Samuel O comes in with five sacks from Pitt. He's someone who I think at 6'4", 245, maybe borderline 250 now, uh, kind of getting up there in size. I think, let, let's see what they have him listed as on the spring roster. 245. So they have him at 6'4", 245, a sophomore. Um, this past season, played in 15 games, two starts, uh, which were the final two of the, the season. He had... 18 total tackles, six tackles for a loss, five sacks, and a forced fumble. The guy wasn't even a starter, and he would have been tied for the lead at Colorado in sacks on the year. He steps into a bigger role at Colorado. I think he will terrorize Big 12 offense lines, Big 12 quarterbacks. He is someone who I think has the potential to kind of get out there and make some plays and really just be someone that can dominate a game Plus, you pair him with B.J. Green from Arizona State. Colorado has two proven pass rushers just going at the quarterback, and they can move him all over the defensive line. It's going to be beautiful. I think, though, that's another guy to look out for. And then lastly, I'm looking out at the backup quarterback battle. Uh, Walter Taylor is someone who I think, given his size and speed, will have a role on offense if he earns the backup role. Even if he doesn't, if he even if he's not QB2, I think they might have a chance to use him in different capacities than Shador. Like maybe use him as a wildcat quarterback. I saw him deliver a absolute missile of a throw the other day on social media. So Walter Taylor, six foot seven, six foot eight. I'm gonna see what they have him listed as. I've heard him listed anywhere from six foot eight to six foot five. This is Colorado's official official listing of Walter Taylor. Um, because I think there's such a allure around him. They have him at six foot five. I've heard him measured all the way to six foot eight. So he's a big dude either way. He's athletic, a lefty southpaw, big arm, just needs to work on his accuracy. I think he has a chance to kind of work his way up the quarterback depth chart and maybe work his way into the offense in a different role. Obviously, no one's taking the job for Shador, from Shador, but he may take some snaps. He may take some some carries to help boost this offense. You guys comment below which players you want to hear about or look at this spring ball. I know it's going to be a blast. I know it's going to be a huge, huge uh, spring ball for Colorado. Comment below the guys that you think could be standouts. I will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, make sure to tune in every single day. Like, subscribe, follow. We have a great guest coming up on Friday. Um, from PFF, we're going to be spring. We're going to be previewing spring football for Colorado. It's going to be fantastic. You guys won't want to miss it. And I will see you guys tomorrow.